Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, and uh, what I would like to do with you in this video is show you how to use the um, the Aquifer Web Lab Simulator online. Um, this Web Lab is pretty easy to do. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory, but I just want to show you um, how this works. Uh, you can watch some of this video, or the whole video, or just little pieces, um, whatever uh, it takes to kind of guide you through this and help you uh, figure out how this simulator works. So to be successful in this assignment, um, you will need this document. Uh, it's the uh, a web lab observing the behavior of groundwater. And our goal in this web lab is to be able to observe and model how water behaves in an aquifer. We're going to look at water in a few other situations, but mainly we're looking at, at aquifers. Um, and there's a little bit of background here. There's a link that you're going to go to. Um, make sure when you put this link in your uh, browser um, that you actually type HTTP colon slash slash. If you don't do that in front, it won't go to the right place. So you're going to go to this link. I already have some instructions in uh, the, the document here. When you open up the link, this is what you're going to see. It's just sort of a blank canvas. Um, and uh, that you'll see some sort of uh, controls down here. And uh, so I'll show you in a moment how these all, all work. But let's jump down to the first scenario that we want to explore here. I'm going to go through as many of these in this document as we have, have time for in the 15 minutes of this video. So uh, in our first situation, it's probably the easiest one to prepare. Uh, we're going to select a prepared situation from the template drop-down menu, and we're going to compare permeabilities. That's what we're going to do for our, for our first one. So if we jump over here back into our simulator, um, all we have to do down here is where it says template. Right now it says none. We're going to click compare permeabilities. Feel free to explore any of these that you'd like, um, but uh, we're going to start with compare permeabilities. Let that load. Okay, there it is. And you'll notice that this is the same picture that we have in our document right here. Um, and uh, one thing that you want to do with pretty much every simulation, turn up the rain probability. That way it's at about 75% or a little bit higher, maybe three quarters. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, click play here. So when we click play, you'll notice it starts to rain right away. Uh, and there's a couple of interesting things we can do here. If you want, you can follow a water droplet. Uh, you can actually just click that, and it will show you what one water droplet is doing as it moves, um, or you can ignore it. So we see right away, just in our initial observations, the water is pouring down. It looks like our pink sediment is very permeable. Water passes straight through. As you move from right to left, it looks like it's a little bit less permeable, all the way to the gray one where the water is seeping through very, very slowly. This might be clay or something. All the way over here to the black one, which seems impermeable. There's no water dripping through at all. So we would say that the black one is, is not permeable. Its permeability is zero. So you can watch these little uh, drops of water sort of trickling through these different sediments and we can compare how they behave. We can tell that they don't have the same permeabilities um, and, and it's kind of hard to observe porosity in this uh, simulator. We don't have to worry too much about that, but permeability uh, at least is very easy to observe. And uh, so we can jump over here. Now you can answer some of these questions uh, and we can move on to another part of the simulator. Uh, anytime that you want to get a new situation, just go ahead up here and click re uh, reload. Um, or you can click this little back button. This will reset things. I prefer to click the reload. Okay, we're reloaded. Right away, I'm going to turn up my rain probability, like I said earlier. And uh, let's look at the scenario. So we're going to actually draw something by hand because there's no prepared scenario in this simulator for this. So we're actually going to create a river channel. We're going to create a little stream channel and we're going to compare how that stream behaves during rainfall and during drought. So when it's raining a lot, what happens with the river? And then when things get kind of dry, what happens with the river? So let's try to draw this. You'll notice there's a big black slab down here. That's no flow. Brown with a little dip and then tan that kind of goes and follows the dip of the brown. So let's go ahead and try to draw that. The thing about the simulator is that you have to draw from the bottom up. Um, it's much more difficult to draw from the top down, and you'll see why in a moment. So uh, I'm going to start with the bottom with my black layer, and I'll just draw a layer going straight across, just like that. And the next one we had was a brown one with a little dip in it, so we'll go ahead and draw that. And, and this might kind of help you see why you have to draw from bottom up. Um, see how when I draw with the pencil, it goes from top to bottom. It fills in all the space under it. If you start below and you do that, it doesn't really work because the, the sediment sort of cuts itself off. It's a little hard to explain, but you'll see You'll see if you try it. So there's my brown with a little dip in it. There we go. 
And then the last thing we have are these two big slabs of tan on top that kind of follow the dip of the brown. So let's go ahead and add some tan on here. There's one. I'll come from over here. There we go. So we have our tan sort of following the dip of the brown, and then we have our black on the bottom. So we have our, our stream channel here, and we're going to compare this in rain and during droughts. So let's actually, you know what? Let's turn our rain all the way up because we want to know what happens when it rains. I'm going to go ahead and click play comes our rainfall. And what I notice happening immediately before even anything else, the water is draining down these slopes into the stream channel. And also, this is interesting too, um, I see that the water that's pooling in the stream is actually moving out into the groundwater. So all this blue layer that you see down here, this is groundwater. This is really interesting that the water this is pooling, sort of puddling here in our stream channel. And we're sort of imagining this is sort of a cross section of a stream channel. And here it goes, it's sort of pouring down into the, uh, into the, the groundwater. Let's turn the rain off for now. All right, there's our water kind of goes trickling through. So we just saw it during rain. Let's watch it during a little bit of drought. Now this is very interesting. This, this is easy to see. I want to point something out to you. I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but do you see these tiny little greenish or light blue dots coming up from the river? Well, that's evaporation. That's water molecules that are, that are being transformed from liquid to, to gas. And uh, this is pretty interesting. Notice how the water level is going down as it evaporates. However, it's not disappearing. It's not just like going away completely. It's still there, even though there's lots of evaporation going on and there's no rain. That's because the flow of the water has reversed. When it was raining, water was pouring down from the river into the aquifer. But now during the drought, the water is actually getting sucked up from the aquifer into the river, and then the river evaporates that water into the air. So whether you have drought or rainfall kind of determines how the flow of, of the, um, the water between the river and the aquifer behaves. See how the aquifer is basically flat now, and it's in the level of the river? The river water in, in this situation in a drought is mainly coming from the groundwater. And there's a name for this. You don't need to know this name, but it's called a rheic flow, when you have water passing between a river and the groundwater around it. Pretty darn interesting. So let's jump over here and look at some other scenarios. There's some questions that you can answer about this situation. Uh, let's look at wells. Uh, we're going to compare a non-flowback to a flowback well. We're going to have to create this, uh, this situation. It's different from this one. We don't have a river channel in this one. It's just three layers. Let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Okay, and we're going to go ahead. I'm going to really rapidly create this situation. We've got the black again down here, just a straight line of black. Got brown, another straight line of brown. Remember, always draw from bottom up. And then we've got our tan. Okay. And we have a non flowback and a flowback well, and their well bores are going all the way down about to the black, pretty close to the black. So I'll show you how to use these. Um, so non flowback and a flowback. So we're going to add a well. And here I've got my non flowback. All you have to do is click on it and just click and hold. As you click and hold, that bore will sink down into the ground. So we've got our non-flow back there, and then we're going to put our flow back over here on the right. And the wells are numbered. That's pretty convenient. So there it goes. What's convenient about it is that um, they're graphed down here with well output. So you can tell based on the, um, the color and the number what each well is doing. So we want to be able to tell how they behave differently. So let's go ahead and just uh, let's let's uh, turn up our rain and let's go ahead and run the simulator. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. Okay, so I've let this run for a couple of minutes and I turned my rain probability up to basically a hundred. Um, just to see what's going on a little bit better here, let's um, let's go ahead and turn down the rain. Let's watch what these wells are doing. Well, this is pretty interesting. So notice how. Uh, the non-flowback well over here, number one, um, it's it's sucking water up, right? It's using water. But over here, our flowback well, this one is actually bringing water up, and it uses the water, and the water trickles back down into the ground. So this might be if you have a septic tank at home, if you you know use uh, use water from a well, and then you know in a septic tank the water goes back down into the ground. Um, this water is actually kind of getting recycled. Right over here, this water is not getting recycled. This water just gets sucked up and consumed. And notice how these uh, 
these depressions, these water depressions are a little different. This one on the non-flowback well is very severe. The water is getting sucked over from the, uh, the aquifer and it's coming up. This one is a little bit less severe. This flowback well is not putting as big of a strain on our aquifer because a lot of that water actually ends up falling back down into the aquifer. It's, it's percolating back down through. And because we have this permeable um, soil, it's able to make it down into that aquifer. So pretty interesting. The different types of wells behave a little bit differently. All right, so here's another situation that we can look at. Uh, we're going to use the sediment drawing tool again, uh, just like we did before with our three layers, but we're going to add a little bit of city pavement uh, here. And so we're going to use a little bit of black, a little black strip here. And we want to see how does this black strip of pavement affect the way that the groundwater works. Um, and so uh, let's go over to our, our browser here and we'll refresh. All right, for the purposes of time, I have just gone ahead and created all these layers for you. Let's turn up our rain probability. Um, and let's go ahead and put that slab of concrete along the top here. I'm just going to really carefully just kind of draw just a line about halfway across or so. There we go. So this is some, uh, some impenetrable uh, concrete or asphalt here. This is like a city. We've got some city going on. So I'm going to go ahead and play. Let's see what happens here. One thing I notice right away, oh, if you're in the city, you're in trouble. Because think about it, what, what are you now experiencing? If this is Detroit or, or some other city, you are now flooded. Um, and uh, that's because this, this pavement is impermeable. Water can't drain through the pavement. It drains through this over here just fine. This is, you know, sort of like a field or a farm or something like that. The water is able to percolate through. But if you live in the city and you're building concrete all over the place, look, this is all flooded. So, uh, and we can see that now that water's pouring off into the, the groundwater. Um, and so this will give you some. Some, uh, some good things to think about, some questions to answer. Uh, let's keep jumping on over here. Uh, let's compare wells different depths. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so what I've done here is I've sort of zoomed ahead. I've created these three different layers and I have a bunch of rain going on uh, just to sort of create a uh, uh, in an aquifer down here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some wells. These are non-flowback wells. And what we want to do is add a really deep one here, a shallower one there and a really shallow one here and just kind of see how they behave. We can watch them on the graph too. So let's add a really deep one here. We'll add a slightly shallower one here. And a really shallow one here. Maybe a little deeper. All right. And uh, notice what I have actually done here. I've turned off the rain for now just so that it's a little easier to watch one process happening at a time. So uh, you can see these, these cones, these, these uh, aquifer depressions, we can see how the depth of the well influences the way that the water is sort of uh, being affected in the aquifer. And so that's something else that you can explore and answer a few questions about. And again, over here, if you watch really carefully, you can see what the output of the wells is um, in, in time over year. And it's color coded, so it's easy to tell which well is which. And then uh, what the last situation that we have to look at is what's called a confined versus an unconfined aquifer. And this one is prepared. So let's go ahead and find this one and we'll go ahead and compare these different. Okay, so I'm going to run over here to our template. Confined versus unconfined. There it is. And uh, let's add some wells to this. So the wells are, are they're both uh, non-flowback, one and two right there. So let's go ahead and add those. As I click and hold, that'll come down in. This one punches all the way through to the bottom. All right, and then we'll go ahead and play. I'll turn down the rain a little bit. We can turn the rain way down if we want. All right, now notice the unconfined aquifer up here. This one's getting rainwater in it, right? If you do have a little bit of rain going on, um, that is actually getting filled up by the rain, right? This water is running down. It's filling up that unconfined aquifer. But if you look at this one down here, the confined aquifer, um, this one is not exposed to the rainwater. And so I want you to think about which one of these is going to run out sooner, the confined aquifer or the unconfined aquifer. Um, the last thing in this document that I'd like you to work on, there's a little reading about what's called the Ogallala Aquifer, um, which spans a bunch of Midwestern states. I'll answer a few questions about that. So I hope that this was helpful uh, in, in figuring out how to use the simulator to explore the behavior of groundwater and aquifers.